Welcome to my lecture online. Let's talk about the thermodynamic potentials. Now there's four of them and they're often confused with one another. So I decided let's do some videos and make it clear what they are and how they're related to one another and what they're used for. I think the biggest mistake that we tend to make with the thermodynamic potentials is that we think we can change from one to the other because we're, we, look up and we look them up in a book and we see equations where they're related to each other so we think that we can use them potentially interchangeably but that's not the case. They each have their very specific purpose even if we can relate them to one another we're not supposed to say oh I can express for example the internal energy of a system in terms of its enthalpy because you cannot do that. That's not the purpose of enthalpy and they're not interchangeable with the other uh, thermodynamic potentials. So the four that we're talking about, oh and one more thing, is that even though we place this in the physics category, it can just as well be placed in the chemistry category. Matter of fact, it might even belong there more than it does in the physics category. So we'll put them in two playlists, one in the physics and one in the chemistry section, so you can find them there. So the four thermodynamic potentials are the internal energy, we use the letter U for that, Enthalpy, which we use the letter H, the Helmholtz free energy, we use the letter F, but it's also used, they tend to use the letter A as well. So F or A is interchangeable. And then we have what we call the Gibbs free energy, and we use the letter G for that. In order to understand them a little bit better, we also need to understand the concept of state variables, which are typically used for a gas. They include the temperature, the pressure, and the volume, and there is some relationship. Then also we need to understand Q, which is the representation of heat, and S, which is the representation of entropy. And they all play a role in the definitions of the four thermodynamic potentials. We should also be aware of the first law of thermodynamics, which says that delta U equals Q minus W. What that means is that the change of the internal energy of a gas is equal to the heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. Now sometimes you look in your book and you'll see this as a plus instead of a minus and students get confused all the time. Why is it a plus? Why not a minus? Well if it's a plus then you read this as the change in internal energy is equal to the heat added to the gas plus the work done on the gas not by the gas. So if you say the work done on the gas and the work does work on the gas and so you add energy to it that's why you have a plus or you say that the gas does work which means you pull energy out of the gas and then you say by the gas so that's what that equation means the first law of thermodynamics so let's first do a general concept um, overview I should say on the four thermodynamic potentials you the internal energy of the gas is oh and yeah, typically it's related to a gas, and that's another thing, is that the internal energy typically is related to a gas. When we talk about enthalpy, we typically are talking about mm, a chemistry equation, a chemistry process, or a chemical reaction. And so therefore, we don't always use them interchangeably for that reason as well. So you, the internal energy of a gas typically, or of a system, it's the amount of internal energy within the system. And we'll see later that the combination of kinetic and potential energy in the system combined forms the internal energy of that system, and it's typically used for a gas. And that only depends on a single variable, it's called one of the state variables of a gas, it only depends on the temperature of the system or of the gas. Enthalpy, we use the letter H, is the amount of heat liberated or absorbed during a process and of course typically we're talking about a chemical reaction and so when there's a chemical reaction either heat is added or heat is removed from that process from the reactants and so therefore we can then calculate the enthalpy based on that so enthalpy is an exchange of energy it's either given off or added to where the internal energy is the amount of energy in the system itself and that's why we cannot use those interchangeably. Then we have two more. Now we have what we call the Helmholtz free energy and the Gibbs free energy. Now we use either the letter F or A for the Helmholtz free energy and G for the Gibbs free energy. Now, what are they? They are related to each other, these two. 
There's a slight difference between them. Well, maybe not so slight, a significant difference between them, and we'll point that out in just a moment. So F, the Helmholtz free energy, is what we call the thermodynamic potential. Again, the thermodynamic potential is a fancy way of saying energy. It's the energy that can be used in a useful way. It's the useful work potential, because energy gives you the potential to do work, so it's the useful work potential. And it's calculated by taking the total internal energy of the system minus the energy lost to the environment. Because usually the environment contributes some of the energy when a system is created. And then we, we take that energy back out, not all of it is usable, some of it is lost back to the environment, and only a portion of it is usable to do work with it. And so the Helmholtz free energy is the useful portion of the internal energy. The Gibbs free energy is similar to that, but it also accounts for one more thing. When you create a system, or when you add heat to a gas, well, that tends to expand the system. And when you expand the system, you do work against the environment. That's pressure times volume, and we'll talk about that later in more detail. But that also is a way of storing energy. By pumping energy into a system and having the system expand, it does work. It's kind of like a spring. It's like a compressed spring. You push against the environment, that stores a part of the energy. And then, of course, you have the internal energy of the system, which is the motion of the individual atoms within the system, and then the electrical forces within the system that makes up the internal energy. Then you have the energy that you needed to expand the system, pushing against the environment. So that's both of those combined. It includes the internal energy plus the energy derived from the reduction in the volume. So now, of course, first we expand the volume, so we put the energy in, but then when you take the energy back out, you allow the system to reduce in volume, you pull that energy back out, as well as the internal energy of the system, you add those together, that is the highest thermodynamic potential available, but again, just like with the Helmholtz free energy, you lose some of it to the environment, so you have to subtract the portion of it that lost to the environment. So again, it's the useful available energy. The difference between these is that with the Helm Helmholtz free energy, you don't include the expansion of the system where you have some energy stored in pushing up against the environment. The Gibbs free energy does include that portion. That's the only difference between them. So other than that, they're exactly the same. Here, the Helmholtz free energy is the internal energy minus the energy lost to the system. The Gibbs free energy is the internal energy plus the energy derived from the reduction in volume. You pull that energy back out, but you lose the energy to the environment, at least portion of it, and subtract that from the total. And that gives you the highest thermodynamic potential available, which is a little bit more than you get from the thermodynamic potential, which does not include the energy stored in the expansion of the system. So that hopefully gives you a nice overview of what the four thermodynamic potentials are. And remember, each is used for a specific purpose and a specific application so they're not interchangeable. So as soon as you realize that even though equations exist to derive one from the other, the equations are basically a description of what it is, but they have a very specific purpose and you tend not to use one for the other. And if once you do that, hopefully it becomes clear.